Tomorrow's boat. Well, there's no use of wishing you luck. I guess you've had plenty. Give me Michigan Avenue on a hot afternoon, and you can have all the yellow dust this side of Seattle. I guess we all feel the same way, kid. It seems that all the homesick guys in the world came up here. Yep. Look this away for me in the boat time, will you? Take this wearing me down. Sure thing. Kind of running against you. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Give us a couple more stacks. Here's where I'm at to earn my fare back to Seattle. There you are. Did I say Seattle? You better quit while you still have the price of a pick and shovel, dude. What's the matter? You want your grave dug? Come on, give us some action. I'm fine. <whistles> Well, the hot seat went cold, eh? Better luck next time, dude. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Well, so long, fellas. So long. Yeah. So long, dude. Oh, Jack, what's the matter? Well, I don't know. Russ, my stomach wants to know how my credit is. Well, if your stomach's as good as your credit, you'll live to be a hundred. Oh, thanks. Did I ever tell you about my grandpa? Died when he's 106. What interrupted his youth? He quit drinking. <laughs> well, he cleans you out, eh? That's tough. Ah, there's a lot more where that came from. What's 
the matter, Mr. Thornton? Did you speak to your pal since you got rich? Well, hello, Shorty. How are you? Have a stimulant. Thanks. When'd you get out? This afternoon. Ah, you know something? These Bastilles up here ain't as cozy as them stirs down little old New York. But the finest jailhouse I ever seen was the Coney Island Precinct. They sent your probing the mail, didn't they? It's a miscarriage of justice. Listen. All I did on that mail route there was just peeking the cup of those Bill of Deuce. You know, Mr. Thorne, it gets darn lonesome on the trail there, and I... Well, I was as innocent like if I was sitting in a New York public library. The letters are supposed to be private, even up here. Well, if I wasn't honest as a day as long will try to seal it up, I wouldn't have got caught. That's too bad. Well, I wouldn't say that. That letter I opened was very interesting. Yeah? Yeah. You saved a bit of your bank, I'd have cut you in on something. Oh, more mail? Yes and no. That letter I opened was uh, worth about a million bucks. Thanks very much for the snortola. Ah. See you around sometime. <laughs> Let me hear a little more about that pipe dream of yours. Pipe dream is right. I've been dreaming about this for six months up in that cold Arctic camp. Yeah, what do you need a bankroll for? Well, I... Hey, you guys! Get out of here! 23, skidoo! Boo! I need a bankroll to grub stake us as far as Dawson City, and then a long way beyond that. Yeah, that sounds interesting. You know something? When they caught me opening those letters, and the judge presented me with six months, or as the English jockeys say, a dozen fault nuts. Well, that judge asked me a lot of silly questions, like how many letters I jimmied, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But there's one question he didn't ask me. Yeah? He didn't ask me what was in that letter. Say, is your credit still good in there? I wouldn't be surprised. Come on, let's go and exhaust it. Okay. His name was Blake. Martin Blake. He had red whiskers and he had a... Well, he was a little blind in his off glint. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. He was cracked. He told everybody he'd found a rich load. That's the guy. Well, he got sick on the trail, see? He was coming to Dawson City to file his claim. He wrote a letter to his son, John Blake, in San Francisco. He had a note on the envelope and said if anything happened to him, the letter should be mailed. Well, his number was up, so the letter was mailed. And you looked inside to be sure that everything was neat and in order. Hmm. But there wasn't much of a letter. It was mostly a map. You made a copy? As I'm coming to the back stretch with a pencil, I feel the long arm of John Law on my shoulder. Did they take the copy away from you? No. And you still have it? No, again. Well, what'd you do with it? I edit. Oh. When that map started to digest, though, sort of went to my head, went to my brain. So while I'm sitting up there in the booby hatch, I made a copy of it from memory. <laughs> Take off my boot. Well, I'll show you. I got a good memory, too. Of course, there's a couple of things here I don't quite figure out. That now, you see, I don't know if, if this is a mountain or a river. See, and they, I, I think they said, well, there was rapids here, but I don't see how that could be because I don't remember no river up there. Hey, listen, little man. The graveyards up here is full of gold hopheads. Guys who smoked a pipe full of hope had glittering yellow dreams and ended up under a pile of rocks in frozen ground. Me, I'll take bourbon. Kills you slower, but a lot more pleasant like. Well, now, wait a minute, Mr. Thornton. Something mighty strange happened today. Something mighty strange. Yes, yeah, sit down. I'm standing up in front of the Palace Hotel, see? Yeah. Not doing nothing because, well, you know, the fella just out of the can and broke. Just looking and standing is about the, the limit of your activities. Yeah. Well, it was a good idea, see? Because things started happening. Yeah. Out of this hotel comes the most beautiful skirt that you ever put your peepers on. And foreigner is a dignified looking guy, I say, on 46 autos. And him and her get in a sled and they go off. Headed for Dawson City. Thanks for the society note. Yeah, but we, I get excited, see, and I run at the hotel and take a look at the ledger. And you know the names of these two interesting people? Mr. and Mrs. John Blake from San Francisco. 
Old man Blake's son? I hope in my subtle way I've made myself clear. You have. Look, if I get the money for an outfit, how do we split? Even Steven. Okay. Wait here, I'll be right back. Well, listen, you know, they got a day's lead on us, Mr. Thornton. It's only a gamble. That's what I like about it. Hot! What? Where's Marie, Tex? She's through for the night. I'm so sentimental. Jack. This is the best way to hit you, sweetheart. <laughs> What's the matter with this fly, though? I'm sorry, Jack, but that one's taken. It belongs to a team I sold yesterday. I tell you what, I got a big fella I'll give you for practically nothing. Fifty bucks. <laughs> What's the matter with him? He ain't broke yet, and I don't think he's gonna be. Oh, tough, huh? St. Bernard, he's all animals, Joe. He's on a hunger strike. Won't eat anything? Nothing but your hand or your foot or points north. He looks like a stone from some swell joint in the States. I never ask a dog no questions. Blue ribbons don't mean nothing to a pooch up here. <laughs> How'd you like to see me make this guy eat? All right by me. I ain't got nothing to do all winter. Get some grub. Frank, dinner for one. Well, help. Unharness little boy Blue. Bring him up here and put him right there. Dinner for one. Okay. Let him out. I hope you know what you're doing. I hope so, too. <laughs> Let your dog get this piece. He'll eat regular from now on. I wish I had time to break him. He'd make a great dog. All right, Frank, put him back. I'll do it. Which one of you is Mr. Groggins? Well, speak up. Is Mr. Groggins here? My name is Smith. Are the outfit and provisions ready that were ordered in my name? Well, why don't you answer me, Groggins? You speak English, don't you? Uh, yes, sir. Here, here's your whole outfit. Telephone, huh? Not as tender as he looks. If I'm not too inquisitive, Mr. Groggins, will six dogs be enough? They'll pull the load all right. With me on it? Well, I don't know about that. You don't look like a man who knows much about anything, Mr. Groggins. Well, I do know that people come up here don't usually make a buggy ride out of it. They walk or run with the dogs, sometimes break trail. You sure will need more dogs if you're going to ride that sled and more dog food. And a needle and thread. What for, my intelligent friend? The sort the guys is gonna split their sides laughing at you. <laughs> Once in a while, people do laugh at me. But very briefly.
Well, so dogs, dogs. Uh, bring Flip and Frowsy. Say, Joe, why don't you show the honorable Mr. Smith this beautiful animal? I don't think so. He's too savage. Is that so? Well, just let him out. He's liable to get tough, Mr. Smith. Let him out, I said. What's his name? We call him Buck. I don't like to take the responsibility, Mr. Smith. That's why you'll never amount to much. What are you asking for it? Uh, 250 bucks. So, let him out. So your name's Bucky. You're tough, huh? <laughs> Hey, wait a minute, Mr. Smith. That dog cost me a lot of money. I'll pay for my pleasure, Mr. Gronk. Wait a minute. That dog belongs to me. I bought him, Smith. And I don't allow my dogs to be shot. That is, of course, unless I shoot them myself. That's all right. I'll give you twice what you paid for it. He's not for sale. Just as you say, my good man. Just as you say. Well, what others have you? Uh, here, here. These two will do. Hitch them up. I ordered a collapsible bathtub from Seattle. Did it get here? It's a bathtub. It's a bathtub. You sweet meat, you're losing your home. Easy with you. Uh, out. Come on. Come on. Come on, Harmon. Here you are, Mr. Smith. We thought it was something to pile wood in. You know, the only bath the person gets up here is by the sweat of the brow. How interesting. Mush! Been a great pleasure, gentlemen. A great pleasure. Nice guys. Well, I don't like to see a dog killed either. But after all, 250 bucks is 250 bucks. All right, I told you I'm buying him, and I am. Wait a minute, boss. We ain't got no time to fool quiet, with him. Quiet, quiet. Whose money is this? Listen, you. You're my dog, and I'm your boss. And the sooner you learn that, the easier it's going to be for both of us. <laughs> Trying to be friendly with you. Buck, come here. Buck, come here. Come on, boy. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Come on now, be. You can kiss that 250 bucks goodbye. Yeah. It's too bad, too. He'd have made a great dog. Now he'll either freeze to death or the wolves will get him, poor fellow.
Make yourself at home, Buck. Hey, look, boss! Wolves! Is he dead? No, he isn't dead. And he isn't a he. Hey, you know who that is? That's Blake's woman. Oh, John. Oh, John, darling, I'm so glad. Oh. Oh, I thought... Is my husband with you? Have you found him? You're the only one we've found so far. What about your husband? I don't know. We ran into trouble and we lost most of our provisions crossing the river. The ice broke and, and then some of our dogs died. Two days ago, my husband went out to look for food and he hasn't come back. Do you think he's dead? That's a pretty good guess. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, what are we going to do with her? You know, what can you do? Take her to Dawson and leave her. Hey, but you're forgetting one thing, pal. Yeah? She and her old man was looking for the same thing we are. And they had the map, the original one. You'll find my husband for me, won't you? There's nothing we can do. We're a thousand miles from nowhere. Either the cold got him or the wolves. Come on, get on the sled. We're taking you to Dawson. But you gotta help me find him. He isn't dead. I, I don't believe that. Hey, listen, lady. In this country, when a guy's gone for two days, he's gone. I refuse to go until I definitely know about my husband. If you don't want to stay and look for him, you can go without me. Don't! Don't! Put me down! Put me down! I can't go! I've got to stay! Put me down! Let me out! Tom! Stop this sled! Whoa! Matter. You want to have these straps? Oh, no, no. You might fall off. I'm doing this for your own good. Later on, you'll thank me. I hate you, you beast. Uh, Let me out of here. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Whoop! Let's go! Marsh! Hi. Beans. You know, it's customary up here, Mrs. Blake, for everybody to pitch in and do their share. You've been with us two days, and up to now you haven't done anything but sit around and look nasty. Can you cook? Yes, I'm, I'm considered a very excellent cook. Oh. Well, how about giving these beans the benefit of your talents? I'll do nothing to help you. I'm your prisoner, and since you seem to want me with you, you'll take care of me. Want you? We just had an attack of insanity and decided to keep you from committing suicide. Very bad idea, come to think of it. Hey! You forget our guest of honor. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Houlihan. Hey, give me. 
Hmm? Come on, give me. Uh. Say, uh, Miss Blake, if I ain't too inquisitive, <laughs> uh, what was you and your old man going to do up here? Work. Oh, uh, looking for the yellow stuff, eh? Probably. Can't understand it. Guy taking his wife way out in the wilderness. Stupid if you ask me. Mr. Blake had an excellent reason. Yeah? Yeah. He loved me and I loved him and... Well, I wouldn't let him go alone. Undoubtedly, that would still impress you as being a very stupid reason, Mr. Thornton. We thought it an excellent one. I still think it's stupid. Have some coffee. It might warm you up. Well, tell me something. Uh, didn't he have some object? I mean, wasn't there something that he was after? Well, what I mean is, did he have a hunch or did somebody give him a tip? I'm very tired, Mr. Houlihan, and I know you must be. Me tired? Heck no. Well, I thought you might be, asking such personal questions. Good night. Good night. Boy, she's a woman in a million. You think so? Yeah, she don't talk. Oh. Can that be rain? <laughs> hey, you gotta admit, though, she's pretty as a picture. You can have my share. <laughs> They're back with him. Got him right uh -huh. there, lost him. Well, let's turn in, Would you mind putting another log on the fire, Mr. Thornton? Oh! Hey, fire, wolf! Fire, fire, fire! Who, what's the matter? You woke up. Go on back to bed. Some beans I ate. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Thornton. Oh, thank you, Mr. Thornton. <laughs> Mr. 
Hey, you know there's two of them dogs still missing, Buck and the Gray Boy. Yeah. Speaking of the devil. Where you been? Uh-huh. He's been in a fight with that gray boy, I bet you. Yeah. And that means we're one dog short. Uh, I'm telling you, that buck's an outlaw. I've known horses like that. Never could break them. Well, what are we going to do for a lead dog? Well, one eye's had a lot of experience. Move him in the lead. Come on, Bobby. Get that stuff off you. Come on, Buck. Buck, come on. Come here. Come here. What's the matter with you? <laughs> Success has gone to his noodle. Maybe he wants to ride on the sled. Shut up, will you? Buck, come here. If you had any common sense, Mr. Thornton, you'd realize what was wrong. Well, as the intellectual member of this party, suppose you tell me. Very well, I will. Buck has whipped the lead dog, and he now naturally believes that position belongs to him. That's the old law of succession. The king is dead, long live the king. That is, if you know what I'm talking about. Oh. I see you're afraid to try my suggestion. Put one eye back in his old plate. Come on. I'm crawling up my back one eye. Come in. All right. Come on, King, and get crowned. Well, come on. The lead's yours. Perhaps that great but frigid mind of yours can figure out what's the matter now. That club, stupid. Some people an awful long time to catch on, doesn't it, Buck? He meant that as a caress, didn't he? Yes, he did. I gotta hand it to you, he's never done that to anybody else but me. It appears that you and I are the only members that Buck Fraternal and Protective are served. <laughs> Seems she'd rather be an elk. <laughs> Come on, get on with the dogs. No, thank you. I'll cross the way you men do.
we pack what we saw, he's on the dogs and foot it. We can make Dawson in three days. Oh, just a mayor cook's tour, huh? Yeah. You better come closer to the fire. We won't bite, you know. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait till I put on my spats. All right, you win, Mr. Thornton. It is stupid for a woman to come up here. Hmm. May I? Yeah, sure. They usually get along better when they do as they're told. I wouldn't presume to teach you feminine psychology. But I might add, very humbly, of course, yeah. That if a woman is asked to do something, she's more apt to obey than when she's commanded. Are my stockings dry, Mr. Houlihan? Don't take a minute. I'll wring them out again and see. <laughs> Does that answer your question? <laughs> Spring time, beauty folks, spring. You're the one who's breaking my heart, you pretty thing. A boo, a boo, a boo, a yee, a dee dee dee, a dee dee Spring time is here. Oh, 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 thing. A boo. A boo. Boo. Oh, no. Give things away. <laughs> Say, boss, how much we got this side of the grave? Oh, just about enough for a room in a poor house. This mansion over here will do. Come on. Come on, Mike. Come on, Mike. Come on. <laughs> I guess it's about time to say goodbye. There's an office in the Mount of Police down the street away. They'll get you back to the street. We, uh, we stake you ourselves, only while we've mislaid our funds. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you've been very nice, Mr. Thornton. I, I suppose I was a little difficult, but, well, losing someone you've grown to love isn't yes, a... Yes, I know. I'm sorry I was so rough. Well, I, I, I'm sorry. I was so unpleasant. Mm. I'm sorry that I can't think a thing to be sorry about. Oh. I suppose you've got friends and relatives back in the state. No. My husband's all I had. Why do you ask? Because we've got a proposition to make. Yes? We know what brought you up here. We've known all along. I mean, old man Blake's claim. But how? How, how could you possibly know? Give me that map, Shorty. Yeah. Did you ever see this? Or, uh, something like it? Yes. Yes, I've seen the original. This won't do you any good. It isn't correct. I know it. That's why I was going to suggest it. My husband had to borrow and beg to make this trip. He went through all sorts of horrible difficulties and... Yes, I know. Now, well, now he... He's gone. That's why I was going to suggest it. You were going to take it away from him. Oh, now, please be reasonable. What I'm trying to tell you is, why did you come in with me and Shorty on this thing? Where our map is incorrect, give us the right route. We'll be partners. And, well, while you're about it, I suppose you may as well consider all angles. 
We need your information about this. Now, we could probably find the mine ourselves without your help. It would take longer. Of course, you don't know us very well, <laughs> except that we're a little rough on women. We might play you dirty. We might take your information and then tell you to, well, go jump in the river. We might do that. On the other hand, we might be on the up and up with you. Let me see your map. This river here. It isn't a river, it's a dry creek. And that mountain peak, that, that's down here at the southeast. Why that's it? Oh, and I think all, yes, all the other mistakes are minor ones. All right, Mr. Thornton. Now you can tell me, how'd you express it, to go jump in the river? Well, I guess we've got to do a lot of jumping ourselves to get the seven or eight hundred bucks for the outfit. <laughs> you know, seven or eight hundred dollars is hard to get. My, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. Uh, but we don't get it if we have to take a knife and stick somebody into it and take it away from it. Yeah! Come on, Shorty. Much. Yeah. Come on, let's go. All set. Keep your fingers crossed until we get back. We've got to make a touch, Shorty. There's something that means more to me now than just finding a mine. Yeah, I've been noticing that. Listen, boss, you're a doctor and you know what's good for you. The way I figure it, well, hunting for gold's a full-time job. And anything that interferes with it, well, interferes with it. What do you mean? You know what I mean. You mind keeping that fat snoot of yours out of my affairs? All right, all right. No offense, boss. No offense whatsoever. Where's Buck? chance to make some money. I doubt it. I'll give you $300 for it. Sure. 500 No, nope, not interested. I'll give you $1,000. Oh. <laughs> well, that's a fabulous price to pay for a dog. I could get a team of six for that. What do you expect you do with him if I let you have him? Give myself the exquisite pleasure of putting a bullet to his head. <laughs> That's what I thought. No, oh, thanks. I'm sorry I can't contribute to your fun, mister. <laughs> Boo! Well, you have to drink, gentlemen. Well, Jack, my boy. <laughs> How is Rick? Hello, Sam. Hi. Glad to see you. Sam, this is Shorty. Oh, um, it... I've just seen the argument you had with that fellow back there. He doesn't seem to like your dog. No, no. Well, the dog doesn't like him either. <laughs> yeah, look, Sam. Yeah? Uh, how do you think? Uh, holding nearly flat. But anyhow, I got enough to ask you gentlemen to join me in a drink, yeah? Wipe it straight. You know. Right, boys? Come on, boy. Come on. Snap. <laughs> uh, well, Sam, here's to your very good health. Go. Oh, this. You know, that's a lot of money that fellow offered you for your dog. Yeah? yeah. That's a lot of dog, too. <laughs> that's a gross article, I tell you. Hey, boss, let's hit for the hotel, huh? No, 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 not yet. Maybe somebody would know, show. Holy! <laughs> How are you? They got lots of trouble. No way they can get two dogs cheap. What matter? Huh? They got load of thousand pound floor. They got to get over to 40 mile quick. Two of my dogs, they die. It's too big load for the other four dogs to pull. Hi, Al. Yo, that's one fine dog, mister. You want to sell, maybe? No, I don't. I say he don't. You know, that fellow back there just offered him 1,000 bucks. 1,000 bucks? 
what the dog do, spit gold dust? He's the best dog you've ever seen. He can pull that load of yours without any help at all. Sure, I bet you he could. Well, we could. How'd you like to make a little bet on that, partner? I haven't any money to bet. I hear of one dog in Nome, he pull 800 pounds, but he dies dead to do that. Yeah, no dog can pull a thousand pounds. It's impossible. Well, it's impossible. Let's drop it. Is it all right to look at him, mister? If ain't every day we can see a dog that can pull a thousand pounds. Come on, boss, let's get out of here. What's the matter, gentlemen? If I overheard correctly, the argument is whether or not this dog can pull a thousand pounds. I'm willing to bet a dollar a pound he can't. He won't bet. Says he's broke. I don't want money from you, my friend. If your dog is able to do it, I'll give you the thousand dollars. If he can't... Well? Why, then, I'll take the dog. No. Say, that sounds fair to me. Why, mister, after all, you wouldn't want to own a dog that couldn't pull a measly thousand pounds. Sounds like an easy way of making money to me. Sure. That's a fair he can get the best of it. First he shoots off his mouth, and then he won't go through with it. <laughs> well, my friend, these gentlemen seem to think I'm giving you the best of it. Don't do it, boss. Come on, let's go out of here. Thousand dollars. It's a bet. It's a bet! <laughs> hey, thank you. Make one big mistake, mister. But where we go outside? <laughs> I gotta poke the such a wrong. I'm right. But he dies dead to do that. The dog will do it. I, 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 Oh, gee, boss, he can't do it. He'll probably kill himself trying. Shut up. You don't know what you're doing this for money. You're afraid of getting stuck here and losing that Blake woman. Our dog is to pull the sled a hundred yards from the standstill. That's the bet. <laughs> a hundred yards. All right, all right. Oh, no. Three, four, all right, get five, back, get back, Eight, Somebody cut that eight, dog, you hear? Nine, ten, one, two. Yeah, dog is gonna draw a sled. Just stand there. The dog will do it. It's plenty load for one dog to pull. That dog will do it. Five, six, seven, eight, get back, nine. Keep your hands off that dog now, you understand? Oh, I beg your pardon. Seven, eight, nine, Go on, mister, we're waiting. Fuck! Fuck! Come on, boy! <laughs>
Money, the gelt, please. Hmm. Thank you, sir. Well, say, uh, you know something? Well, you'd make a good dog biscuit. Is that a halter? Yeah. Mm. Because I'm working like a horse, I just want to look like one. <laughs> there you are. Now hang on to this. Is that all? Did you remember nails? Nails. Hammers and saws. Look. You bought them yourself. What's the matter with you this morning? Nothing. Get out. Mm. Oh, hey, listen. There's something we did forget. A medicine kit. We need some iodine and quinine, just in case. Yeah, all right, I'll get him. Hmm. I hope it won't be too heavy for you to carry. Oh, woo! See you later. Right. Say, um, what do we need the nails and hammers for? Well, the snow's disappearing fast. We'll have to catch the sled later on and build a boat. Oh. Say, uh... Look. Yes? What is it? I, um, I got something to tell you. Maybe you better take it sitting down. You know how I feel about women in this country. Now, where we're going is ten times as tough and rugged as anything you've seen up to now. What are you getting at? Well, just this. I paid your room rent here at the hotel, and I'll leave you enough money for expenses until we get back. You mean I'm supposed to wait here while you and Shorty go... That's it. I've been wondering whether you'd try something like this. Well, if you're going, I'm going too. You mean you don't trust us? I mean exactly that. All right, then Shorty and I'll stay here. You go find the money. Oh, don't be smart. Well, you're not going. It wouldn't be fair to you or to us either. Slow us down to a walk and make us carry double provisions. Besides, it's more of a risk, and I want to see you take it. Now, believe me, that's my only reason for making this decision. If you don't like my way of doing it, do it yourself. You can have my share. Oh, oh, so you're going to give me my mind now. You will thank you very much. You will not leave this town without me. Uh, we'll leave without you. You'll wait here and like it. All right, come on, let's get going. How about the iodine and quinine? Now, get them. That female iceberg comes out and wants to tag along. Smack her down. I wonder what happened now. Oh, well. You know, I know a couple of people used to fool around like that, and they got children now. Mm -hmm. You, uh, you still want to go along? Not only do I still want to go, I am going. All right, come on. Let's get going. What 
Locked up, Sergeant. Oh, they just brought a fellow in. Picked him up on the Skagway Trail. What happened, sir? Well, it seems like he left his sled to go hunting for food. Then couldn't find his way back. He was almost a corpse when they found him. What's his name? Well, we found these on him. Name seems to be Blake. John Blake, San Francisco. Thanks. I always wanted to join the Navy. <laughs> Will there be room for the dog sailor? Oh, I'm afraid not, Mady. They'll have to run along the bank. They will, sailor. <laughs> be careful of that varnish on the deck, you two gobs. Step right in and cover it off. All set? Come off. Heaven, boy. Toot, toot. All right, a pause. Bam, 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 Come on, what? Come on! The way I figure, we go 100 miles upstream, then we follow a creek that runs into it north. Never fails. Oh, you pretty things. <laughs> That's right. North for about 40 miles. And then all we got to do is... <laughs> oh, if you could only cook. <laughs> then all we have to do is find the knoll, on which stands a tree half shattered by lightning. And the cabin. Near that knoll. Gee, I wonder what it's going to be like having things instead of wishing for them. Not nearly so much fun. You're wrong, Claire. Wishing never got anybody any place. It's owning something that counts. And taking it when you can't get it any other way, that's all right, too. It's the law up here. The law of the Klondike. If there's something you need, grab it. Take it away from the other guy. It's a good law. It works. Nope. It only works when you deserve to have what you take. Otherwise, it's stealing. Perhaps that particular commandment isn't respected up here. They all get broken. That one gets splintered. <laughs> well, no. That boat manipulator is a little too tough for my delicate constitution. So if you don't mind, sir, I shall go below. Oh. Good night. Good night, Charlie. Good night. Good night, Dice. Summer is just around the corner. You know, somehow Dawson and Skagway and even California seem like places I'd just heard of. Seems as if I'd lived out here in this wilderness forever. Other people and other places never existed. There's one thing I do remember. And that's a very kind and wonderful man. I don't want to put Buck seeds in the fryer. What are you thinking of, Buck? 
Yeah, he's probably remembering more than thinking. Remembering back the time when he was more wolf than dog. And there was only one law. The law we were just talking about. Get him late, Jack. I think I'll say good night. Not guilty, Your Honor. Hey, somebody pinch me. Oh. <laughs> that does it. It's just as it was in the letter. My, oh, my, oh, my, I do declare. Hey! Hey, boss! Boss! Come here, quick! Oh, look at... Oh, my... Oh. Look at, look at... Tell me if I'm dreaming. Look at... Holy mackerel. It's gold. Claire, more gold than I've ever seen in my whole life. Oh! Oh! Oh, Mr. Ah! It ain't gonna rain no more, no more. It ain't gonna rain no more. I've got gold in my head. It ain't gonna rain no more. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> hey, if we pan this much in an afternoon, think what we'll get in a month. Gee, I wish I could stick around here a couple of days longer. You know, I've been dreaming of this moment all my life. <laughs> I'm sorry, Shorty, but you got a foul claim. Mm -hmm. Now, as long as the trails are open, some prospectors have to discover this creek. First to register gets discovery rights. You're the boss, boss. You know, when I get to talk, the first thing I want to do is... Don't. Don't what? Get drunk. Not a chance. I'm going to catch up on my meals. <laughs> you know, I coffee in my stomach's been getting weaker every day. <laughs> well, so long, kid. And don't spend it all in one place. So long. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Blake. Bye, shorty. Come on, dogs. <laughs> hey, hey, Shorty! What? You forgot your meal ticket. Oh, oh, yeah. Come to Papa. <laughs> huh? Snake eyes. My, oh, my, oh, my, I do declare. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, it ain't gonna rain no more, no more. It ain't gonna rain no more. I got gold in my head. It ain't gonna rain no more. Oh, it ain't gonna rain no more, no more. It ain't gonna rain no more. I got gold around my head. It ain't gonna rain no more. Boy. Fuck. Fuck. What's 
birding him. I don't know. What's that, Jack? Wolves. That's funny. They don't usually come so close to camp. We'll kill him. Buck, come here! Buck! Oh, He's been changing lately, haven't you noticed? Seems as though he remembers things up here. Buck, come back here! Well, well, welcome, stranger. How are you, huh? <laughs> well, seems we still mean more to him than that old memory. Yeah. Hey, hey, wait a minute. You better come inside before you change your mind. Let's pull together. <laughs> One, two, three. Oh! 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 <laughs> we weren't together. I wish you hadn't. Why not? Oh, I haven't let myself think about us. I didn't dare. Why? Oh, I don't know. I, I've had sort of a strange premonition. I don't know exactly how to explain it. The explanations but... belong 5,000 miles away. I only have one question, and I only want one answer. You know the answer. I don't want to know the answer. 
I'm going to have the answer. It just struck me, Mr. Blake. Now my back, please, Cayley. I say, Mr. Blake, it's just struck me that so far I've taken this entire matter on trust. I believed your story and put up the money for this outfit. I still believe your story, but I think it's time you gave me a little more positive proof. You should show us the map, Mr. Blake. When I asked you in Dawson City to help finance me, I told you I knew the location of a very rich mine. I still know where that mine is. I'm taking you there. But the map, Mr. Blake. Why did you continually refuse to show us the map? I see. Well, what's to prevent our taking it away from you? The possibility that such a map may not exist, except in my memory. Violence will do you no good. You've come this far, and now there's nothing you can do but go all the way. You'll gain nothing by killing me. Now, now, who talked of killing? <laughs> We're not pirates, my dear man. We are gentlemen adventurers on the road to great riches, eh? <laughs> come, come, Cayley, my towel. Again? Yes, I know. I heard his lady friend howling last night. Uh -huh. Well, that's what happens to a fellow when he gets in bad company. <laughs> hmm. Wait a minute. According to all you've told us and to all calculations, we should have located the mine two days ago. I'm afraid you're bringing out my worst side, Mr. Blake. Yes, I, I, I know, but... If you're trying to hoodwink us, we are certain to find it out sooner or later. And if such is the case, there's nothing left for us to do but mourn for you. I swear I'm doing the best I can. I followed the compass directions exactly. I don't! Go to do it, thank you! <laughs> the bird tree! The cabin! That's it! My dear Mr. Blake, how can you ever forgive me for doubting your integrity? You've placed me in a most embarrassing position. I scarcely know what to say. One for the master. And one for the dame. And uh, one for the little boy who's filing the claim. Why, Jack, I never suspected. The world doesn't understand me. <laughs> At heart, I'm an artist. Oh, I want to write poetry. I want to compose. I want to sing. Paint. Barn. Yes, yes, those two. <laughs> mm. I want to starve in a garret. Wear me hair long. Mm. Get egg on a flowing tie. In other words, be a genius. Ah, but no. Oh, the world sneers at me talent, and instead it gives me gold. Oh, my poor boy. You seem to have all the comforts of home, Mr. Fonton. A comfortable cabin, golden evidence of more comforts to come, and... A beautiful lady. You'll oblige me greatly if you will assist in making this incident as quick and painless as possible. Come on, get it over with. What are you going to do? 
Do? My dear man, nothing at all. The important thing is... We're going back by water, Keeley, using Mr. Thornton's canoe. You may destroy our burrows. As I was saying, the important thing is to prevent you people from filing claim on this charming site before we do. And how do you expect to do that? Oh, very easily. By leaving you here and destroying all means of transportation. If you can't get back to Dawson to file, why then... If you can't get back to Dawson to file, now can you? So we'll file instead. If you want to work the mine while we're gone, you're very welcome to do so, of course. We'll be glad to recompense you for your trouble when we get back. Meanwhile, we'll take with us your gun and ammunition, axes, etc. It'd be a grave error to leave behind the implements for building another canoe, wouldn't it? Kelly! Francois! Kelly! Come here! Look here, Smith. Why can't we do business? I'm always open to an honest proposition, Mr. Thornton. We'll give you the claim, all of it. You can have what gold we've got. But leave us some way of getting out of here. The winter snows are coming on. My dear man, you call that a business proposition. We already have the mine, and the gold is ours by right of, how shall I put it? By right of conquest. Do you mind if we don't argue the point anymore? Let's help ourselves. Mr. Thornton would only squander the gold. <laughs> I must commend your sense of humor, Mr. Thornton. Very few people would be able to smile on an occasion like this. Thank you. Not at all. I remember watching a magician once. From an apparently empty hat, he shortly produced a rabbit. He smiled very much as you're smiling now. Because I imagine he knew all the while that he had that rabbit up his sleeve. You've something up your sleeve, perhaps. Perhaps. Roll up your sleeve, Mr. Thornton. There's no rabbit there. Come, come, don't let's strain our friendship. Madam? Careful, you idiot. You might have split the bottom. We'll be back, my friends. For the time being, goodbye. And goodbye. They wanted gold, now they got it. Hey, 
Claire, get the medicine kit and some hot water. Is he badly hurt? Yeah, he's got a nasty crack on the skull. Some prospector, I guess. Go away, Buck. Get out of the way. John! John! John, John, darling. Say, dearest, I'd like to talk to Mr. Thornton. All right, dear. And I thought I had lost you. Try to rest, will you? He's feeling much better this morning. He remembers everything, thank heaven. It wasn't so serious as we thought. He wants to see you, Jack. What are you going to say to him? I wanted you. And I took you with us. Well, I'm keeping you. You know I love you, don't you? You couldn't doubt that, could you? Well, he needs me. You have your law and I have mine. Best thing you can do, Blake, is to get out of here as quick as you can. You need medical attention. Take the canoe. It's easy going now, but it won't be when the heavy snows come on. Will you come with us? No, I'll stay here and work the mine. When you come back in the spring, we'll divide what I've found. Buck. He never would have forgiven me if I'd forgotten that. Would you, Buck? <laughs> you could have skipped that. You're only making it tougher on everybody. Oh, put your arms around me. <laughs> I'll be seeing you. Yes. You'll be seeing me. I'll be seeing you too. Every day and every night and every minute. And this isn't the end. It can't be.
careful of that first stretch of rapids. After that, it's clear sailing all the way. Goodbye, Thornton. And God bless you. Goodbye, Blake. Goodbye, Jim. Goodbye, Claire. Hard to say no to that call, isn't it, Buck? It's all right, boy. Go ahead. Shorty. It ain't gonna rain no more. Yeah! Shorty! Hello, boss! <laughs> oh, you oh, old oh, son yeah. of a gun. You came just in time. You saved my life. Well, look at you. You're all dressed up. Yeah, we're in the money. I filed a claim. We're rich. Richer than Astor's uh, pup. <laughs> <laughs> no trouble at all. I went right in and signed the name. Told him the claim was up. Shorty. What? What's that? That's our new cook. Where'd you get it? I won it in the crap game. <laughs> <laughs>